Hey everyone and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. So a uh, friend of mine, John, from work, hi John, um, he oh, sent me this great lump to repair. It's a Tannoy SFX 5.1. Tannoy, uh, generally speaking, a pretty good make of uh, speaker systems. And uh, this is uh, some kind of sub bass speaker. Um, for, uh, for his home cinema system. There's a problem with it. Um, it goes thump every so often and scares his wife. Um, I believe the capacitors have dried out, so. <laughs> so I have capacitors, transistors, resistors, more capacitors. Um, pretty much, I hope. I hope everything I need to be able to fix this up, do the job. So um, let's get cracking. Let's uh, let's pull it apart and see if we can find out what's wrong with it. So these are actually quite nice. Um, there's a line input on it, obviously a power switch on it, a phase angle, just in case uh, your speakers are wired up um, out of phase to this big bass speaker, which is attached to the bottom of here. There's a voltage selector, so uh, it's a standard IEC mains connector, and uh, operates from either 115 or 240 volts, 230 volts. So yeah, it's quite a cool piece of kit. And then when you look inside, a nice big fat hairy transformer with apparently a built-in thermal fuse and um, some PCBs in here. Now, uh, this is the control PCB here. And that, to me, straight away, I believe I can see what's going on. Let me see if I can show you this a bit better. So looking at the back of this PCB, I don't know if it's uh, easy for you to see, but there's some discoloration going on here. And I believe this is where the PCB is getting a little bit too hot. So I'm just gonna disconnect this PCB here. Uh, need to undo a few screws. And what looks like some kind of um, audio amp on the back of it there, that might be a TDA uh, 7070 amplifier or perhaps something Similar. So there we go, we can see all around that area, everything has gone slightly brown. There's definitely some uh, some overheating going on here. We'll look at modifying it, we'll look at replacing some of the components there uh, in order to try and fix it. Okay, so a bit of a close-up for you then. This is a TDA chip. See here what looks like a Class AB low noise push-pull amplifier. So that's a couple of transistors. There'll be a complementary pair. And uh, then a bunch of DC blocking capacitors and some bias resistors in order to set the gains of the transistors to their most linear section. Right, the other thing to note then is, is some silicon heat sink compound. Uh, there's a little mylar, hopefully you can see that down in the bottom there. There's a little mylar insulator and also some more silicon heatsink compound. And that's all connected to this lovely big piece of aluminium front fascia. Everything has been sealed beautifully so no air escapes um, through holes and starts whistling and that kind of stuff. So actually the construction is really quite good. I'm quite impressed with it. Uh, all the cables are nice and thick, the control cables are little spindly control cables but um there you go those are the drive cables to the speaker so uh, yeah they're all pretty uh, pretty good cables and um even the cables to the speaker have been foamed so they don't rattle against the side of the box right let's get and fix it okie dokies right so um what i've done then i've just set the oscilloscope up uh, at the minute just as a almost like a sort of uh, multimeter um, I just wanted to have a quick look at the power supply make sure the power supply looks okay so uh, hopefully you can see then that um, 
the uh, line is going straight down the middle of the oscilloscope now. So that's uh, zero, that's pretty much zero volts. Um, so one side of the capacitor here should give us about minus 40 volts and the other side of the capacitor here should give us plus 40 volts. So you can see that line just pinged up and down. Um, so I guess it would probably be interesting to un-DC couple, go to AC coupling and have a look at the amount of noise that's, uh, that's on that line. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, there's coupling, AC coupling. Right, so how many volts per division have we got here? We have got 50 millivolts per division. So that's one, two, three, four, five, five. So 250 millivolts worth of noise by the looks of things on, uh, on the positive side. And let's just uh, connect to the negative side. Should be similar. Yeah, it looks very similar. So uh, yeah, about 250 millivolts of, uh, of noise on both sides of things with the smoothing capacitors in place. So actually just a little bit noisy, but I suppose if it's driving a big bass speaker, that tiny amount of noise probably uh, shouldn't cause too many troubles. Um, there's a grounding cable in here, this, uh, this black one, that's just making life a little bit troublesome. I have fired up the um, TS100 soldering iron uh, now, this is all a bit weird because I've got to do everything backwards so you can see what I'm up to. Um, but with a little bit of luck, we should be able to get that on there. It's quite a hefty joint. <laughs> uh, and there we go. Solder is melting. We should be able to pull this off. Come on, there we go. Lovely. Right. So, that, uh, that makes it a little bit easier now. <laughs> Only a little bit easier, apparently. So um, while I'm doing this, um, I'm very keen to tell you that if you don't have experience with working on live products, working on products with mains voltages in them, uh, when they're turned on, like I was earlier, um, suggest you don't do that, obviously. I've removed one capacitor from the PCB and uh, I, actually, I poked around on the PCB and the, and the capacitors didn't seem to do much. Um, so here's a really trashy way of testing a capacitor. So I'm holding one probe on one lead of the capacitor, the other probe on the other lead of the capacitor. Give that a few seconds, take them off, switch the capacitor the other way around, and you should get a tiny little beep. And that's not happening. So basically what I'm doing is the meter has a battery in it and when you touch the pro the capacitor leads you effectively charge the capacitor with a tiny amount of power uh, from the battery in the meter then you spin the capacitor around and um, that should normally give you some kind of a reading. So that's the old component there, that's a 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor and this here is a 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor and um, if we do exactly the same test on this brand new capacitator, so there we go, both leads connected up like that, spin it around and listen. There you go, hear that tiny beep, spin it around, tiny beep, spin it around, tiny beep. That just indicates that the capacitor is taking some kind of charge. So um, clearly uh, the capacitor is a cream cracker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade ever so slightly. This here is a, knowing, knowing the voltages that are in and around this circuitry, I've decided that a 50 volt capacitor at 100 microfarads is probably gonna handle things a little bit better and last quite a lot longer than this 16 volt um, 100 microfarad capacitor. So there's the old one there. I've popped out and this is the uh, the intended replacement which will go effectively in its place. Right, let's make sure we get the orientation correct. Their uh, polarity does make a difference. So normally the white stripe here is uh, the side that um, is negative. The side with nothing written on it is the positive side. Thankfully it's all clearly marked on the PCB as well. So I don't know if you can see that, get the angle right. You can see there that there's a positive side and a negative side. And again, if you look, the capacitive lead, the capacitor leads are slightly different lengths. So the longer one is the positive lead, 
and the shorter one is the negative lead. So we'll pop one of those in there, replace them all, all of the electrolytics on here I think uh, uh, deserve replacing. So, okay, bear with me. So because the PCB is uh, so burnt and tarnished, I had uh, this pad lift here. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and bend the new component leg over. I've noted that it's uh, connected to the adjacent pad, which is great news. So um, what I'll do is I will make sure that I bend that leg over to the adjacent pad. All right, there we go. Put that guy in there like that. Right, so there we go. So let's just solder that bad boy on, or solder it on, as they say in America. But um, yeah, okay. So there we go. Right. Just make sure that uh, there's no shorts. But no, that should have reinforced everything there nicely. So just got to do the other one now. That is all of the capacitors replaced. So we'll just check uh, resistors um, and there's a few zeners on here as well. So we'll check those, uh, make sure they're all operational. A couple of semiconductors. I'm actually, I did buy replacement semiconductors. The um, uh, little uh, 2N series transistors, where are they here? Uh, so I did buy a set of complementary pair transistors for this job, um, but actually I don't believe it's worth replacing those. I think, uh, I mean transistors, you know, generally speaking they either work or they don't, they're, they're, they're dead or not. So with a bit of luck, that should be it. I reckon uh, we can put it on test. So that's all of the capacitors replaced on the PCB. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine capacitors replaced. Apart from apart from these two big uh, power supply smoothing capacitors at the top here, um, everything else, these little ceramic disc capacitors, should be in good shape. I've checked some of the resistors already; they are looking pretty good. Um, so let's um, let's plug it in, fire it up, and uh, and see what it does. Right then, I nearly, very nearly, forgot to do up the earthing straps. Uh, so the grounding straps, not an earthing strap actually. There's no earth on this thing. Um, but yeah, these are grounding straps. So um, uh, what they do is they connect the uh, the signal ground, the signal ground plane of one PCB to the other. And, uh, and actually they do connect it to the front fascia as well. So it's a local earth or a local zero volts for, for this machine. If you look at the actual, uh, the mains incomer on it, there is no real earth. So, uh, right, there we go. So that's everything connected back up apart from the speaker. So let's get it back in its box and see if we can get some noise out of it. So those are all the uh, capacitors that uh, I've replaced. Um, I've turned it on. I've got a green light. That's always a good start, isn't it? Uh, let's plug in a cable and um, plug that into uh, a telephone call. <laughs> oh no! That's just typical. My telephone is an iPhone 8 and it doesn't have a jack on it. Thanks, Apple. Right, this has got an output on it. Okay, there it is. Right, so hopefully that's plugged into there then. Um, oh. Oh, I can hear, I can hear thuds coming out of it. Right, uh, how do I turn the volume up? There we go. Right, it's rattling.
feeling because okay, let's stop you. It's rattling because I didn't put all the screws in the back. Um, one thing, <laughs> one thing I've always learnt is uh, if you're gonna, if you've got lots of screws to do up, give a little test before you do all the screws up because you never know you might have to take it apart again. <laughs> anyway, I'm pleased to say this sounds like it does exactly what it says on the tin now. Happy days, lovely, cool. Anyway, John, I hope you get hours and hours of fun out of it. Thanks ever so much for watching. Give us a good old thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, have a wonderful week and a wonderful weekend. Cheers and beers, people.